So your lab for this week is lab number 12 and it's about the freezing point depression of a solvent when we add a solute to make a solution. Now anytime we get a liquid to solidify into the solid phase it's about a drop in temperature and we get to a point where the molecules no longer have enough kinetic energy to resist the forces of attraction between the molecules induce dipole attractions, dipole attractions, hydrogen bonding and the like. So once the bonding forces become stronger than the molecule's ability to resist, we lock the molecules together into the solid state. And as temperature is decreasing, that's our freezing temperature for the solvent. However, if we add a solute to the solvent, those solute particles are making their homes in the spaces in between the solvent molecules. So they act as a barrier preventing the molecules from getting close enough and the bonding forces getting strong enough to lock the molecules in. So temperature has to drop further, the molecules have to lose more kinetic energy before they're moving slowly enough for the forces of attraction to take hold and lock the molecules into the solid state at a new depressed freezing temperature. We add a solute and the freezing temperature can only go down with the addition of a solute. Now because we only have a very small amount of the solute compared to the solvent, the chemical nature of the solute doesn't matter to the effect of the freezing temperature depression. The only thing that matters is the sheer number of particles which are being added to the solvent. The greater the number of particles of solute being added, the greater the effect on the freezing temperature depression. So today we're using tertiary butyl alcohol. But tertiary butyl alcohol normally freezes at about 25 degrees Celsius, which is above room temperature. So we'll have to melt the tertiary butyl alcohol, or TBA, as it's sometimes known. We have to melt it by putting it into a beaker of hot water. Water at about maybe 50 to 60 degrees. Let it melt and get it up to temperature. Then you should take 10 grams of that solvent, weight on the beaker, in a test tube, which has been put into a beaker. Take your 10 grams of the solvent, and then you could do put it into a clamp and submerge the test tube and the TBA below the level of ice water. And you'll start the program, get your lab partner to start the program as you dip the test tube into the ice water. And watch as the temperature drops as the tertiary butyl alcohol starts to cool. Now at some point you're going to see the graph change direction rapidly and become an almost horizontal line. That's when the tertiary butyl alcohol has entered into the freezing stage. And the temperature shouldn't drop unless every last molecule has frozen into solid tertiary butyl alcohol. Trouble is, we're cooling so rapidly that sometimes all that energy isn't evenly distributed amongst the solution of tertiary butyl alcohol. So you're going to have to vigorously stir the solution, either with the thermometer which is inside the test tube, or perhaps unclamp the test tube, and with the thermometer inside, swirl and shake the whole test tube around in the beaker of ice cold water. And if you stir and shake the test tube sufficiently, it should give you a very flat line or a very close to a flat line on the graph. Eventually, after 10 minutes, the experiment will stop. And then you can use the cursor on the monitor screen and to highlight the portion of the screen which contains the bulk of your graph with your cooling and freezing slope. Highlight with the cursor that region of the graph that contains your slope 
and it should show up as a slightly more grey area on your picture. Then hit the zoom in button and the graph should centre on that shaded area you chose. Now choose the linear curve fit. Once you've highlighted the cooling phase of the graph and that will give you the best straight line for this data and then take a linear fit for the freezing phase of the graph and again that will give you the best straight line and where those two lines intersect on the graph between the cooling and freezing that's going to be your best estimate of the true freezing temperature of the tertiary butyl alcohol Record that piece of data in your lab book and then get the experiment ready for a second run after having added the solute to depress the freezing temperature. So put your test tube of frozen tertiary butyl alcohol, the TBA, back into the 60 degrees beaker of water, heat it back up and get it melted and up to about 50 degrees. And then weigh out one gram of your first solute, a certain lid, on the balance and add that to your test tube of tertiary butyl alcohol. If anything gets stuck in the sides of the test tube, then scrape it down into the bottom with the aid of a spatula. If you want, go to the front desk and use the vortexer to rapidly mix the solution and dissolve the acetone lead powder in thoroughly. Then restart the experiment dipping the test tube back into the ice water, maybe add more ice if you need it, and again watch your graph as the temperature drops. Keep stirring, keep shaking the solution of tertiary butyl alcohol in a certain lid to make sure that energy is evenly distributed in the solution, so when it does start to freeze, you get a nice flat line curve, or as close to a flat line curve as possible. After do the zoom in and the linear curve fit again and where the two lines intersect that's going to be your new freezing temperature which should be a depressed freezing temperature from the original graph. So you can measure the difference in the freezing temperature without the solute and the new depressed freezing temperature with the solute. And you're going to use that data to work out the freezing constant a tertiary butyl alcohol. So the change to the freezing temperature is equal to the freezing constant specific to that solvent multiplied by its molality, which is the number of moles of solute in one kilogram of the solvent. Now, you're only going to have a very small amount of the solvent. You should only have had 10 grams. But with your mass of solute, that one gram of solute, you can divide it by the mass of one mole, work that out from the chemical formula, to work out how many moles you have. You can take that gram mass for the solvent, that 10 gram mass, divide it by a thousand to turn it into a mass in kilograms. And to work out the molality, take the number of moles you have, divided by the number of kilograms of solvent you had. Now you can use your calculation, your equation for the freezing point depression, which is the drop in freezing temperature being equal to the freezing constant for that solvent multiplied by the molality. You can rearrange that to make the freezing constant the subject of the equation. So the freezing constant is equal to the drop in the freezing temperature divided by the molality of your solution. So now you can compare the freezing constants you've calculated for the two sets of experiments. You'll have a freezing point constant when we were using the acetonolid as the solute and a freezing point constant for the tertiary butyl alcohol when we were using ethanol as the solute. Compare these two values. If your hypothesis is proved true and 
the chemical nature of acetonolid or ethanol truly doesn't make any difference to the freezing point depression. You can show that it's all about the sheer number of molecules and therefore with a molar quantity it should give the same level of freezing point depression. So that freezing point constant that you work out for the two halves of the experiment should be a match if your hypothesis is proven.